Sometimes when developing a complex system consisting of a processor and an audio codec, particularly if you're new to the audio port on that processor, or perhaps you're using the codec for the first time, when you go to first play audio or record audio, you can run into some problems. In testing a complex system, typically a designer will run an input signal into a microphone or perhaps another analog source in through the A to D and bring that through and loop it through the DSP and play it on the output of the DAC or perhaps just play a file that is, is stored in the DSP straight through the DAC. If there's a problem with the audio, perhaps no audio or perhaps unwanted audio artifacts, it's very difficult to tell at this point where the problem is. Could be in high-level drivers in C code, could be communication between the audio port and the processor, or perhaps there's a problem with the digital audio interface between the DSP and the codec. There could be timing issues between the DSP and the codec. There might be register setup issues in the, in the codec that are causing the problem, or of course there could also be hardware problems or maybe misconnections on the board. A valuable troubleshooting technique is digital loopback. Rather than running the signal all the way through the DSP and using the DSP to loop the signal back to the data converter, I would advise actually tying the digital output directly to the digital input directly at the audio codec. So rather than run it all the way through the DSP, you've got to loop back directly at the codec. Another thing that you would want to do at this point is place the audio codec into master mode if it is not already in a master mode. In master mode, the audio codec will actually generate word clock and bit clock, so those become outputs. If you're using the audio codec as a slave, one common misconception is that word clock, since it's at the sample rate, is actually setting the sampling mechanism of the data converter. However, this is not the case. In, in the case of the AIC310X family, the the uh, sample rate is actually determined by the master clock. So it's important that both master clock and word clock be uh, related to each other by an integer. And if you're using the DSP to set the timing between those two, it's, it's fairly easy to get those out of sync at some point. So by placing the AIC 3104 directly into digital loop back directly at the data converter and placing it in master mode so that both bit clock and word clock are generated by the uh, codec, then that kind of rules out that problem. Now at this point, you can run a signal in, and I would recommend a sine wave rather than using a microphone input all the way to the output. With a microphone input, it can be very difficult when you're looking at the results with an oscope to uh, see any periodic type of issues. With a sine wave, it's often very clear um, when you have a problem. Once you have resolved any problems that you had, with the register setup to make sure that you could get a signal all the way through the data converter with the device directly in loopback, then you can, the next level of complexity would be to put the device into slave mode if that's the intended configuration. Now you can troubleshoot to make sure that the timing generated by the DSP for the, for the data converter is correct on the digital audio interface. It's important to give some time for this uh, for when you're testing in, in slave mode because if mem clock and word clock are slightly out of sync, um, it can take some period of time before any errors here or uh, unwanted audio, audio artifacts would be noticed. Finally, once you have any timing issues resolved from the processor to the audio codec, you can place the device back into full loopback using the DSP to actually loop back in software. At this point, you've eliminated any problems with the codec register settings, any problem with hardware between the um, codec connections and your board, and all of the uh, digital audio interface uh, issues that you could have. And at this point, you can work on your software and drivers to make sure everything is operating as expected there. At any point along the way when you're troubleshooting, if you have problems, please remember that TI is here to help you. Um, if you send us your schematics and your register settings, we'd be happy to take a look at them for you and verify that everything is working okay. That completes this video. I hope you found it useful. And again, um, you know, we wish you uh, success in your endeavors.